the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love through the intercession of Pope Saint Gregory, in though we pray with the spirit of wisdom those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishing of a holy flock may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities, or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things, he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us. His we are. His people the flock he tends. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For he is God, the Lord whose kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Come into the presence of the Lord. Please stand. 
I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, The disciples of John the Baptist fast often and offer prayers. And the disciples of the Pharisees do the same, but yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. Otherwise, he will tear the new, and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wine skins, and no one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Sorry, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning to all of you. Good morning. The, the Gospel of Luke is, uh, is baffling, no? Why is it that I am baffled by this? It's precisely because there are things here that seems to contradict, uh, if you're going to look at it, no? It seems to be contradicting. So let us try to explore it. Now, I'm not able to come with a conclusion here, but let us just try to explore this. First, Jesus was telling that the, the, the uh, Pharisees and the scribes were, they were fasting and so on and so forth. And so his disciples, on the other hand, are not because he is with them. And then he said, But the days will come, and the bridegroom is taken away from them, that they will fast in those days. So question. Are, are these days mentioned by the Lord? Here with us? Or will it come in a, in a different future? You see the point? I don't know if you get my point. What I'm saying here is, okay, the Lord was with His disciples. That's why they were eating and drinking. And then the Lord said, but the days will come. And when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. Are those days mentioned by the Lord? The days that we are living now? So, if those days that the Lord mentioned in the past is now the present. Are we not supposed to fast and abstain and live a life of austerity? Is that it? Now I do not know the answer. Or on the other hand, it may be possible that the Lord is still with us. The Lord is still with us because He said, I will be with you throughout the end, until the end of time. And so therefore, the days by which the Lord mentioned that His disciples will fast 
or those people will fast is not the present but the future wherein Jesus will come back and He will judge us according to our faith and works and then for those that the Lord will be taken away, in other words, those who will be condemned, then they will fast. In a sense, yeah, they will deny themselves of pleasures in, in hell. So that's one thing that baffles, that baffles me. And, I, and until now, I cannot find a satisfactory answer to this. Although I have read a lot of commentaries, but this seems to be baffling still. For me, uh, not for all, I think. Okay, so that's the first thing. Question of the days that will come. Implications sa kabuhita. Eh, Father, nung labot ko nung namun, ako doon makabuffling, confusing. So what? Well, because it will now guide the way we live in the present. So how are we supposed to live? Are we going to live in the way that the disciples were living, that is drinking and eating? Which means that uh, we will find pleasure in these things? Because take note, huh? eating and drinking is not wrong. In fact, Jesus was being accused that he is a glutton and a drunkard. Because he is eating, he is literally eating and drinking. Wala lang si Jesus, pungko lang ako nag, kulukad lang ako po sa mga ilinom. Nag-inom din siya eh, kaya nagkakaon man, upod sa mga tao. That's why he was, he was accused of being a gloton. Kapalakaon. Pero may nangara sa piyesta. And a drunkard, pero may nangainom. While the Pharisees and the scribes, they are more rigid, or not really the word rigid, but they are more austere. They don't eat a lot. They are picky with what they eat and what they drink according to the laws. Okay, so that's one thing, and I will just leave you with that uh, thought in, uh, in mind, no? That one, because I, I myself has no conclusion with this. Another thing that really baffles me. Which is better, the new wine or the old wine? Of course, I know, I understand that this is more of the of the mentality, etc. Pero reading the text as it is, let's forget about the cloak first. I don't want to discuss that. Let's just focus on the old wine skins and the new wine skins. Because uh, we don't have much time anyway to explore this. But let's focus on the wine. New versus old. Which is better? Is it the new wine or the old wine? Well, Jesus said towards the end, the old is good. As he, as he said here, and no one who has been drinking old wine desires new. For he says, the old is good. Question. Isn't it that whenever you hear homilies on this, on this uh, particular gospel, priests or homilies would often say about new mentality. Correct? Usually, I, I don't know. Explore the... If you have time... <laughs> If you want to embark on this exploration. Pero basta. Pag amunin ka ng gospel, ang usual sining uh, commentary sang pari is, or sang preacher, whoever is making the, the reflection, is that we need a new mindset, a new mentality. Correct? That's why a new mentality should be placed in a new my uh, no, a new mindset must be placed together with new behavior a new context because the old and the new cannot 
mix. It will burst the, the new wine skins, for example. Pero towards the end, and no one who has been drinking old wine desires new. Because the old is good. So, would it mean that those who are, it, it talks about habit, nga kita nga mga naanad na in a certain way of thinking cannot anymore explore new ways of thinking or behavior precisely because naanad kita sa daan, sa, sa, sa old wine. Or maybe some of us are even old wine in the sense nga naanad na kita. But the question is, are old wines bad? Does, does it mean that the old way of thinking and mentality bad? But that is not so. Because the old wine is also good. Okay, so again, that is something that for me has, needs a lot of, I still need to find a, a conclusion that seems to be convincing in terms of understanding this parable. And besides, another point is, is the new way of thinking would eventually destroy the old? Is it necessary that the new way of thinking has to destroy the old? So if we want to adopt a new way of doing things, does it mean that the, bad, that the, 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 the old that we have been working on, that we have been doing, is to be, to be discarded as if nothing at all? None. Okay. To my dear brothers and sisters, I think... Uh, I would not be able to come up with a conclusion on this uh, gospel reading. But these are the things that I, should, I would like you to think of. No? For maybe, if you have time to reflect, if you're not busy, maybe you can think about it. What are those things? Number one, in terms of uh, our way of doing things. Are the old ways already irrelevant? Wala na to say yes ang pulos ya. Or base, pwede man nga, because eventually, I take note, the new wine will eventually become old. So that which is new will eventually become old. And would this be that we also condemn that which we accept now as good to be bad later on? Okay. I do not know if you get is it a little bit, uh, kwan, ah. baka kamu mismo nagalingin ang ulo nyo sa buko sa lingon. Okay, just to end this, for example, value systems. Okay, I will end it here para medyo may konkreto nga kwan ka mong basi. Ano nah, mo ito yung nahamba ni Padre? Tuman ito, hindi mo ito kachindi ko nung nawakal ito. The value systems. No? For example, uh, respect to elders. One, it's very important. It's a very important Christian value. Di ba And we express that in many ways before. For example, maabog kita sa balay, we usually bless the hands of our elders kiss their hands or kiss them on the cheeks. Di ba lang, beso or magmano. Among ginaya Alin sa una? For those of you who have been growing up with that kind of uh, culture. Subong. O nga, gaan mo pa na kung wala na? And that's a big question. How is respect for the elders being expressed nowadays? Kung hindi siya nagamano, kaya hindi nagakiss, kaya ano na lang ang bago nga pamaagi. You see? So there are things that has to remain, although the expressions might be different. O kung basit na dula na gin. Look at how you... 
Tapos I remember, I remember, sa gagmay kita. Ginatudloan ni kita yan. Kung may, may, may mga amigas, may or amigos, ang inyong mga parents na nga masulod, makumpare o makumare, natudloan kita, kiss kay tito, amun niyo, kiss kay tita, amun niyo. Natawag ka gino, ka maghalok, o mabisada, or whatever. Subong. Kung natanaw nato na magmano is already old, then what is the new? And is the new way of doing things better than the old way of doing things? Whether they vary in expression, the question is, is the respectful elders, elders still there? Because that is the underlying foundation. Yeah. That is something that we have to think about. Another example, and I will end here. In terms of greetings, uh, na. Same lang para maglingin ng ulo nyo. Another expression of greet, of respect. Usually, yatuluan ni kita sa una, proper etiquette, is the young who will greet the elder first. Di ba lang? Ang bata, ang mauna, sa pak, sa nagat, sa tigulang. Ang mga gina, klaro ginang etikita na. In the workplace, because there are hierarchies also in our workplace, those who are subordinates should greet their superiors first. So, mauna ang guardia greet sa manager. Okay. Subong, di ba siya ng father, wala na naya subong yung ang strict hierarchy. Kaya equal naman ang tanan. Okay, equal ang tanan. Masin ka, Father, na, na, man na yun nga ikaw ang mag-greet una. Sabi ikaw manager, nasulod ka, no? So, yung greet ka sa gwardya, sa sang imong uh, office. Ito ka namin, di ba lang? No, kay, you don't have hierarchies anymore. You consider everybody as equal. Ito ka namin, di ba lang, nga ang boss, pag sulod niya sa gate or sa, sa, sa door, Mauna pa siya ang basa guard. Good morning, guard. Kag mga mga guard. Good morning, boss. Ito ka namin, di ba la? Oo. Oh. Okay, gina. Well, problema. Pero tanawan niyo ba subong? Wala na. Gasapakis ang ang mga subordinates. Tanan niyo mga sa eskwilahan. Sa una, ang sudyante, maglabay ang maistral. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Of course, you do it once lang in the day. Hindi naman pwede yung katakasugat alam nyo, good morning ka. Pero ikaw, first encounter of the day, you greet your teachers. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. So, bo, labayan ka lang sa isudyante, kisa ikaw pa nga may isa naghahambal. Good morning. Ang ah, wala, gasapat. Pawalaan ka lang sa isudyante. So, bo, kaya labayan ka lang. Isa, disugon ka lang kanin mo. Oh. So, again, Okay, there are values that change. Yung na siling ko, the hierarchy. There is the strict structure. Elders and young people. Superiors and subordinates. Gindula ito na because of equality, so-called. Pero look at this equality. How is it being expressed? By being bastos? When people are no longer greeting? And sometimes when you greet them, they would even ignore you? So, my dear brothers and sisters, I leave you with those thoughts. It's up for you to think about it with regards to how are we trying to deal with the old and the new, with the old ways of doing things and with the new ways of doing things. Pero at the end of the day, after all is said and done, values should be preserved, although expressions of it might differ. Pray, brothers and sisters, for our intentions. As we say, Lord, give us the joy of your salvation. Lord, give us the joy of your salvation.
the joy of Christ shine on the faces of the faithful attending the wedding banquet rather than they bear the sadness of those coming from the funeral wake, we pray. May the grief of people who endure great suffering slowly give way to a quiet yet firm trust in the Lord, we pray. May we have a new heart and new mentality to contain the freshness of the nobility of the gospel message, we pray. May consecrated men and women who live their spousal love of Jesus the bridegroom through their vows witness to the joy of having found the pearl of great price, we pray. Lord, give us the joy of your May our departed brothers and sisters sit at the banquet of heaven that the Lord has prepared for his faithful ones, we pray. Loving Father, may our fasting and deprivations not lead to unhappiness, but to the joy of sharing in Jesus' redemptive mission, so that we may someday sit at table in your kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of our Lord for our good and good of all of His holy Grant our prayers, O Lord, that the sacrifice we present in celebration of St. Gregory may be for our good since through its offering you have loosed the offenses of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, to Jesus Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Gregory, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing of your glory as without end, we acclaim. <laughs>
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray. Descending down your spirit upon them, let it do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, and Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Sebastian, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, Saint Pedro Calungsod, and all the saints who have leisure throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will we live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the lord be with you always Amen. let us offer each other the sign of peace Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Through Christ, the Teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of St. Gregory, they may learn your truth and express it in words of charity. Through Christ our Lord. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cure for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. May the outpouring of your blessings on the 75th year foundation anniversary of Carmel Obtain for the human family the healing graces and strength of faith so needed, and that a renewal of relationship with God through prayer change our hearts and lives for the better. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, help of all Christians and help of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. Saint Sebastian, pray for us. Saint Rob, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with us. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. <laughs>